I have two list reviews for you, for you today. The first one is from Graham Thompson, who was one of only five players, I think it was, to be undefeated at the World Open Wall. Um, there was one person, Manuel, who won all his games, and then we were like a few people who did who had one draw, Graham Thompson among them. Um, and so he's he's a, a pretty good top player. He's been the Scottish champion before. He's going to Winter War, which is the final tournament of the Scottish uh, tournament year, and um, they're going to be playing. Penetrating Strike, which is a double envelopment variation. They're going to be playing sectors and timely objectives, so lots of movement. Now, Graham plays Brits, but he does so in a way that is always slightly off from what I'm seeing other British players do. So let's go and see what he's building for Winter War and see if we can learn something from the way he's, he's doing lists, basically. Here we go. Meaning to check. Yeah, that is it. Right. So, Graham Thompson brings an 18 order dice, 1000 point. 18 order dice. That's very, very high, isn't it? Very high. Inexperienced officer. He's paying the tax. Oh, here we. Already you can notice this is, this is what Graham does. That's so different to other uh, Brit players and maybe especially other Gurkha players. Um, he brings five man Gurkha troops here paratroopers, five men, submachine guns on all of them. Um, one, two of those, three, and a Canadian engineer with a flamethrower. So, four infantry selections here. Now, uh, normally I'd say this doesn't work. But it really does for Graham. And he's been playing these for quite a while, like years on years. So uh, he knows what he's doing here. And he knows exactly how to play these. Um, it can be very, very difficult to handle. Because what typically he does is he'll put them in Bren, uh, Bren gun carriers. So, um, so a universal carrier with a Gurkha unit inside. What are you going to do? You're not going to charge it because then the Gurkhas will come out and fight you and the Gurkhas are stubborn and scary and they're, they're pretty likely to win most close combats against maybe with the exception of large units of dedicated assault troops. Um, and, and you're not going to sit there because then the Ren guns will just shoot you to bits and, and after that the Gurkhas will come out and shoot you to bits. So it's a it's a tough combination actually, just not the way I usually run my Gurkhas. Um, he runs them with up and atom, which I've never really understood. And which Graham, if you're viewing this, tell us in the comments why up and atom when you're not really charging that much. Why not vengeance or something like that that could actually benefit the rest of your army as well. Um, just a thought. Heavy mortar team, inexperienced, without the spotter, just like I run them. Sniper team, regular. Flamethrower team, regular. So that's the second flamethrower in the list. Land mattress, oof. Oof. Uh, personally, I think that the land mattress should not be allowed for British armies. It just it gives you so much extra power to have a, a multi-rocket launcher. But if you can take them, do, because it's really good. Early war motorcycles, yeah. That's the thing, isn't it? Um, these early war motorcycles, they give you so much more power and they give you so much more darker. And they have recce uh, for 35 points. They're, they're absolutely amazing. That's 15 points less than a medium machine gun team. Um, and they're way more survivable. So, and, and so maneuverable. Really, really good. And here comes the Bren carriers. One, two. Only two. A truck and a jeep. Hmm. For me, that's at least one brain carrier short. At least. And a darker steward here at the end. Right. Ideally I would I would go down like one or two. 
for a thousand points, you could easily go down two order dice to 16 if that would give you one more um, brain carrier. Because I think the brain carriers is what makes this list. It, it's a soda tank list. This is a classic soda tank list. Uh, Graham does these really well. So you have you have three armored vehicles that can split fire all of them, um, almost tank-ish, and they will just overwhelm the opponent's ability to handle armored vehicles. But um, I think that you could easily get one more. 35 points for a truck. If you take that out, that's half the way to a brain carrier. You could cut down one of the motorcycles, or the heavy mortar could be a medium mortar. So there are places where you could still cut uh, some of these things a little bit down, get yourself a brain carrier more. Because you don't need to be able to transport all your dudes. Um, Although they, I mean, the four units here, they do benefit from being transported. But what they're really there for is to keep a transport safe and to be a second blow once the transport has done what it needs to do. Um, so what he'll probably do is he'll have one Gurkha unit and one engineer unit in the truck because it's a 10 man truck. So, and then he can deliver a double blow um, where the the Gurkhas get out first, shoot something, pin it, and then the engineers go out and absolutely destroy it. I, th I just think you should go all in on the Bren carriers. That's that's my, my main concern here. Right. Graham, as per usual, this is a tough list. Really tough list. But I think you could do better with one more Bren carrier. And I think Vengeance, try it out sometime. You might like it. Right. So that was the first list that I had for you today. The second list is from Todd, who is a newer player who has made a chinded army. So it's a 14 order dice, 1000 point British reinforced platoon, chindits, it's called. Now, Todd. Uh, gives his army a uh, regular second lieutenant with two extra men. Uh, and you can do this, but you're spending a lot of points on your HQ unit right now. You could spend only 35. That's the lowest you can go with a single, um, lonely, inexperienced second lieutenant. And this lieutenant is not a massive benefit. On, so unless you have like a plan for this, this lieutenant and why you need him to re be regular, I don't think he needs to be. I sort of like that you got two extra men. It does mean that you can get some machine guns for free, and it does also mean that you can survive. Pretty, you're pretty likely to survive premature bombardment. Um, I just think it's it's a lot of points. It's a whole. It's a, an extra order dice that you're sinking into your lieutenant, and I'm not sure he's worth it. Right. Then we have the chindits which have a fire and maneuver, um, so they can move and shoot. And they're six-man unit, perfect skirmisher unit, veterans. They're really hard to kill. Um, they're lovely, basically. They're lovely. Behind enemy lines means that you're very likely to outflank as well, um, which is good. Although they're not massively useful outflankers, they're way better skirmishers. Free forward artillery observer, of course, and more chindits, one, two, three, four. So that's five chindit units with rapid fire as the national special rule. So um, does this work? Yeah, a little bit. It gives you two extra shots per infantry unit. So that is 10 extra shots until you start suffering casualties. Um, is that worth it? I, I don't think so, actually. I'm not absolutely sure but that amount of extra shots is not massively useful for riflemen because what rifles are typically doing is that they're delivering maybe one or two hits maybe one kill and a pin and that's what riflemen skirmishes do so do you need to boost that i don't think you do i think 
basically this army would would be much better served with something like vengeance where you can take off pins or something like tough as old boots where you're you're threatening the enemy away from close combats um one of those two i think would be beneficial to this army medium mortar inexperienced love that um, it takes a little bit of getting used to and uh, not being able to shoot your mortar all game but by now i'm pretty used to it and i always deploy my mortar hidden and then move out later in the game if i want it to flamethrower team regular love that needs a jeep light howitzer that's the 25 pounder with a spotter lovely horse drawn limber yep that's an easy order dice aec heavy armored car mark three right so that's a medium anti-tank gun on an eight plus recce vehicle it is expensive for me i would consider maybe um pumping it down to a stack hound the stack hound only has a light at gun but it's much cheaper and it's got dual machine guns so it's got, got a coaxial and a whole mounted machine gun um which is just better in my opinion but A jeep that is for the flamethrower and a steward darker version lovely 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 i think you could save a few points a few points on the armored car and a few points on the lieutenant and maybe consider try it out like a few times and see if if you feel like your rapid fire is giving you enough if not go and consider vengeance it might be better suited or even tough as old boots to threaten away the enemy from close combats if you're being charged all the time. Right, Todd and Graham, thank you so much for the lists. That was it for today. I will see you in the next video. Cheers.